Hi, Tim with SI here. Today we're going to be discussing the Screen Innovations Troy device. This device is used as our integration gateway for our RS-485 shade and screen products. If used in conjunction with Tahoma or Link Pro Z, it can also control our Zigbee and RTS products. We will discuss that later in another video. So first things to discuss with Troy is the discovery of the product. So we currently use DNS and UPnP to discover the device on networks uh, for PC. Uh, we also use SDDP protocol for third-party uh, discovery as well. Once we've discovered the device, the first thing we always want to do is we want to go to our system settings and verify that our firmware is up to date. Uh, in this case, it's 1.21. This is the current. Uh, now, newer firmware can be found on our Screen Innovations website uh, as needed. So once you've downloaded the newer firmware, you're going to want to come down to the firmware update section. In here, you're going to choose the file that you've downloaded and click submit. Now, if you receive an error on your first attempt, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to press the reset button on the back side of the Troy. What that will do is bypass the security for five minutes and then I go ahead and attempt the firmware update again. After the firmware has been updated, we're going to want to go to the integrations page. So we'll start with the integration settings. Here is where we turn on and off the functions we want to use. Uh, so in this case, uh, the Telnet server is the first one we're going to discuss. This is what allows third-party devices to connect to the Troy via Telnet. So of course we're going to want to enable. The port is already set, which is 23 if it's not set. And then we're going to apply a username and password. You don't have to have a username and password, but it is recommended. So once you apply those, you always want to click the submit after making any changes. Just beneath it, you'll see the serial control port settings. Now, this can be used as well for RS-232 control, but you get to use one or the other. So you only get to use the Telnet server for IP control, or you can use the serial port settings for RS-232. Again, we'll discuss that in another video. Up front, we're just going to do the Telnet server interface. Now, just beneath those, you'll see some other. You'll see the Telnet client for Lutron. What this is, is this allows us to connect to a Homeworks or RAW2 processor. And what we can do is we can actually monitor uh, their outgoing integration commands and we can create triggers on our side to control shade or screen products. Uh, that allows us to use Lutron wall switches, Picos, and that sort of thing to control our devices. Uh, again, there will be a separate video on this as well. Now, here at the bottom, we have the wireless bridge settings. So in the case that we are going to use a Tahoma or a Link Pro Z device for Zigbee and RTS, this allows the Troy to connect to that device so that we can actually create what are called supergroups, uh, and we can control RS-45, Zigbee, and RTS devices from the Troy itself. Uh, and again, that will also be in a separate video. So once we've got our Telnet settings in place, we're going to want to go to the integration table. So here is where we can go in and we can discover our shades. We can make any uh, changes that we need for groups, for limits, uh, presets, anything that we want to. So in this case, you'll see that there are a couple of defaults that are already created. Those will become useful as we go further into the programming, uh, but for now we're not going to need them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the device table. So we're going to click on device, so we're going to click on RS-45 discovery. Oop, there's some already here, so we're going to clear that. And then we're going to click discovery. So what this is going to do is this is going to go out and find any devices that are currently connected to the RS-45 network. In this case, we have two motors found. So in here, we can create names for these devices if we'd like to. Uh, and then we can import these devices as needed. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop the discovery. And we're going to import these two devices. So now we can come back to our original device integration table and we can see our new devices. Now, let me state one thing really quick. Notice that I used the back button. Uh, one thing you're going to want to avoid is using the arrow keys at the top of the browser. reason I say that is all of this configuration is taking place within this browser. So if you use that back or forward button at the top of the browser, you'll actually lose the uh, configuration that you just made. Uh, so everything has to be done within the browser, which is why we have the back button. So now from here, uh, we have two motors that we've imported. Uh, and we can make any changes that we need to. Like in this case, uh, if we wanted to check for errors on anything that we've created, we can click the Validate Edits button. 
and we can see that there are currently no errors detected. So from this, we could actually move forward. So again, let's go back. Here, we can see our previous. Here's the four that were already there. And then here's our new devices. Now, with each device, we can go in and modify anything that we need to. So let's start with the config. So if we click on configuration for one of these motors, we have four options. We've got properties, limits, presets, and groups. So from here, from the properties section, uh, we can go in and we can set a motor label. Uh, we can also set a motor rotation for standard or reverse. Again, when selections are made, click the submit button before going any further. On the limits, again, uh, you can see that from zero to 440, this motor already has limits applied. Okay, so we can move this motor by using the double arrow, which is the uh, upper limit. And then we have, this is the move to next intermittent position. And then we have the stop button. We have the move to the next lower intermittent position. And then we have the lower limit position. So with those, we can actually move to the upper lower limit or we can stop it anywhere in between. And we would wanna do that, like in this case, if we wanted to change some motor limits, we could actually modify the lower limit from here. So what we do is we would click the adjust button and then we now have use of these buttons here. So we have the fast up, which is a fairly large movement. We have the jog up, which is a much smaller movement. And then we have the fine up, which is a very small movement, uh, used for forgetting that shade or screen exactly where you want it. Uh, we also have the stop, and then we have the fine down, jog down, and fast down as well. So we'll use these buttons to put that screen or shade right at the physical level that we'd like it to be at. And then we can click the set button to apply that as our new limit. All right, once we have those limits made, again, we can use the motor controls here to test and move the shade as needed, uh, or we can just move on to presets. So in presets here, you'll see that there are eight presets currently listed. These presets are generally used for creating uh, positions such as, say, a 10%, uh, 25%, 50%. Uh, anywhere that we may want to move that shade, uh, say with uh, macros or something other. You also have a button here for set standard preset values. So if we click that, you see it'll automatically apply a 25, 50, and a 75 for those presets. Very helpful. And of course, if not needed, you simply click the erase buttons to get rid of the ones that you don't want. Now, after you have created and set some of these preset values, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to hit the send presets to device to actually push those changes to the motor. And then again, you have your motor controls for testing. Now on to groups. In groups, uh, in here what we do is uh, you would go into a group section and create and define any groups that you may need for the system. And then you would simply apply those to the groups here. So in this case, let's go back. We're going to go back and then we'll go to the groups table and create a new table. So we're going to create a group. Okay, once we've created our group, we need to accept the edits that we have. Then we can go to the back button and we can again go back into the configuration of our motor into our group section and you'll see now that this drop down will contain the test group that I just created. So we can select that group and that motor will now respond anytime that that group is called. So this motor is now part of the test group. And again, we'll go back once we have a base configuration set on all of our screen and or shade products and we've made any adjustments as needed, we have to commit the integration table before we can go any further. So once we have our changes made and you've got everything as you need it, then we'll click on the commit integration table button and you'll see it'll say table is committed. Now everything that you've applied has been applied to the motors and everything is ready to go from here. I will be discussing the uh, super group table and the Telnet client in separate videos. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and uh, I'll talk to you shortly.